wanted to call up and congratulate you on being the number one pig. How about uh, we'll get you flowers if you guys just give us one day when you shut the hell up. <laughs> Ever since I listened to you, Tom, I haven't been in a relationship. I'm not spending a single dollar. Good for you. Don't be pussy, man. We can their wife first, take their balls back, and go out with the boys or something. You have zero paternal instinct to spread your seed and procreate. Well, I like spreading my seed mostly into the other end of a latex condom. Now, why did you have a girlfriend again? Uh, I was young and, uh, you know, 16 when I got in the relationship, and I didn't know who Mr. Lycus was. Didn't know what Lycus 101 was at that time. But uh, now I rock to a different tune, if you will. <laughs> so you don't believe that marriage could be happy? You don't believe that it could bring people happiness? You know, I think there's people who uh, jump from an airplane and uh, they're happy. At least till they hit the ground. Oh Feels like you're flying. Uh, what a wonderful time you must be having. Oh, I am. This is the best job in the world. I bet. Anyone would love to have your job. What a catharsis. What a wonderful narcissistic rage you get to have a playground for. I heard there's a bunch of frat boys at UCSB that put an antenna on top of their house and they get your show. So, touche, Tom. That's how, well, that, that's how you stay on the air because people want to hear your show so bad, they put up a tower. Interesting. Maybe I'll go hang out at the frat house. Well, just remember, they're going to expect you to put out. Why should we sign contracts to give you our wealth? Forget it. So why buy the cow and you can get the milk for free? Huh? Damn straight. A lot of them are cows in this country, too. She works really hard. She has a really good job. And she doesn't need that kind of stuff. But she kind of expects it because everybody else around is, you know, especially at work. You know, flowers, candy, boyfriend this, husband bought me a diamond ring, whatever. You know, suicide looks a whole lot better than Valentine's Day. I'm not a metrosexual by any means. You know, I enjoy my evenings watching football, reading my NRA magazines, and cleaning my guns and getting ready to go to the shooting range as I'm eating my home-cooked food. I've been with my girlfriend for three years. I have never once been to a chick flick with her. I have never once held her purse in public, okay? I've never even gone out with her on Valentine's Day. I have my balls. I pretty much think that this woman here is just a feminist because she can't get any. Well, it's always pretty much the same thing. Women who demonstrate against pornography, you wouldn't want to see naked anyway. Women who demonstrate against abortion can't get laid. Uh -huh. And I think women who complain about the objectification of women are women with mustaches and sideburns <laughs> who can't get a guy to look at them. Robin, what did you want to say here to Julie? You're calling up and saying you're going to get rid of your boyfriend because he no, wasn't the wrong exactly gift the first for you. Out of my mouth. Paul Mass, are you? Well, gonna... I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Well, then you should. And, well, then you shouldn't open your big mouth. I'm opening my big mouth because I'm listening to your dumb ass. That's all. Then calling a man a slut is redundant. Oh, okay. But then it's also, slut isn't a word you would use as, like, you. Would, that's more referred to as a bad word than just the word man. No, I actually, when I meet a woman, I hope she's a slut. Okay. <laughs> You're disgusting. You're just horrid. From Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I just have Tom Likas! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the Radio Talk Show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am. I'm your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8. Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Wide open telephones. Anything goes here. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. By the way, I'm getting a lot of mail like what I'm about to read you here. A lot of it. 
Here's one from Jeremy. Jeremy writes in and says, Dear Tom, you did it again. Every time I take your advice on something, it works wonders for me. First, you said, dump that bitch. And I ended my crappy marriage seven years in. Six months after first tuning into your show. Second, you said, work on my game. And I would get more ass than a toilet seat. And oh my God, were you right. Third, you said, don't pay more than $40. And I can't believe how much cash I'm rolling in. Now that I don't pay tons of dough to try to get laid. What a waste of money. With game, you can get it for free. Most of the time, girls who want me buy me drinks. Fourth, and the best part, you said it's easy to get laid on V-Day, so guess what? My buddy and I rolled into Lola's, yes, your favorite V-Day joint, last night. We had dinner first, then looked for the lonely chicks sitting at the bar. An hour later, I was at my friend's place, pile-driving a hot young Asian chick into his living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Justice. <laughs> Thanks just doesn't say it enough. You are the man, and that's all there is to it. Now I have to go put Neosporin on the scratches on my back. <laughs> oh, I am just bursting with pride there. I got to tell you. I got another one here. There's more. This is from a listener named Amir. Amir writes and it says, Dear Tom, he said, After I DTB'd my girlfriend last year, I have accomplished an insurmountable amount of goals that I have set for myself. Well, I guess by definition, then, it wouldn't be insurmountable. You just surmounted them. I am 24 years old. I am almost done with my BA. I start law school next fall, and I live on my own. Being a full-time student in Orange County, money can definitely be an issue. However, I have noticed how much money I save by not being in a committed relationship. In addition... As I try to follow your rules on dating women, I have noticed that keeping my wallet in my pocket has a direct correlation to how fast I get tail. I am not rude to women, but I do not pay attention when they tell me about their lives, and I do not under any circumstances give compliments to women anymore. Now that I have listened to your logic about life, I notice that women are simple, predictable, and foreseeable animals who can be easily manipulated into dropping their panties. For Valentine's Day, I put your advice to the test, and I did not get any results until about 12.01 a.m. the next day, when I received a text message, Happy Valentine's Day, from one of the chicks in my bullpen. About 10 minutes later, someone else in my roster repeats the same act of desperation. About 20 minutes after that, the third bird starts to sing about how she had a bad Valentine's Day dinner with her boyfriend and wanted to see me. I was in shock. This has never happened to me. In fact, Valentine's Day was a dreadful day that I used to spend in malls buying crap for my girlfriend and hated every minute of it. So now I'm thinking that I could just sit here... Pick and choose who I want to invite over. And meanwhile, I haven't spent a dime all day from the three women that texted me. I chose the youngest and hottest one to come over. After she drained every last drop of fluid in my body, I wake up to her making breakfast, followed by some more fluid drainage. After that, I simply kicked her the hell out. By the way, even though she knows I used and abused her, she texted me immediately after with this quote, can't wait to do it again. 
Throughout my years, I have never had such a pleasurable Valentine's Day ever. In fact, I didn't spend any money, and I didn't even leave my apartment. Simply by avoiding Valentine's Day, by resisting to pick up that phone and go on a date, avoiding the pseudo-romanticism that comes with this dreadful holiday, I got hot pieces of ass to give me everything I wanted. Tom, I owe all of this to you. Thank you for changing my life. Amir. Thank you, Amir. Very, very good. Wide open town phones on the Tom Like You Show here at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Coming up later this hour, we're going to talk poker with the Unabomber, Phil Locke, and Antonio Espandieri. They're going to be competing in the LA Poker Classic coming up at the Commerce Casino. And uh, poker is still hot as a pistol, and it's on every channel. It's on all the time. I'm amazed there isn't a poker network, and I'm sure that's coming. But uh, we'll talk to them coming up here. Meantime, your call's at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. This is Mariana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? (laughs) I guess it's a statement. I'm hearing an echo. Uh, well, the reason why I call... It's getting worse. The what? I'm, I'm hearing an echo. Yeah, it's... we have, like, a bad connection, right? Something like that. I'm sorry. Well, if you can listen, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, well, as long as you can hear me, that's fine. All I wanted to say is that yesterday when I was listening to your show, which, by the way, I love, Thank and my you. husband hated that I love it, but anyhow, I I just want to say that when I was younger, my friends and I wouldn't shave on purpose thinking, okay, well, if I don't shave, I'm not going to have sex. I'm not going to sleep around. But yet, after you drink a lot, then you end up sleeping with some guy. And So you're <laughs> saying, so you're, I mean, I'm going to have to put you on hold because that echo is going to kill me. So what you're saying is that not shaving your legs is kind of like putting on a chastity belt. It kind of guarantees that you won't be going out and having sex. Exactly. That's what we try to do most of the time. That's right. I mean, not anymore. I mean, I have kids and I'm married, you know, but I, I imagine... Now you never shed your legs. Is, you, is that echo killing you, you know? It's killing me. Where did you get this phone? The, um, what? Where did you get this phone? Are you calling it on Skype or something? <laughs> is this vomage? I'm calling at a doctor. Yeah, it's only twenty four ninety five a month. What a deal, huh? I guess. <laughs> I think it's for like sixty nine ninety nine or something. Sixty nine ninety nine. Yeah. What a deal. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that, and I do feel bad for the. Just remember, it's only twenty four ninety five a month, unlimited long distance, and nobody can tell that you're not using the phone company. Stop it. Stop what? Where, what country are you from? Well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just sitting here on the phone. Are you from another country? Am I what? Are, are you, you from, from another country? I'm um, from Argentina originally. Oh. So did you get one of those, like, phone cards so you could call your relatives in Argentina? Is that what this is? Like most of my friends were either Greek or white, or I had some Asian friends. Huh? Uh, hold on, I'm standing here to see if I can get a better reception. Yeah, I'll see if you can get better reception on the phone. Yeah. How's that? Well, anyhow, because I hate to, to have a bad reception. Do you have a problem? It sounds like you're underwater. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I don't know where that comes from. What a good deal. I'm talking to my husband who got here. I'm talking to Tom Likens. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. You gotta tell your husband no more Skype. He thinks I'm lying to you. Are you calling me from your PC? 
Are you talking to that little microphone? No, I'm calling you from the street. I have a cell phone. You have a cell phone? Yeah. Is this one of those cell phones you pick up at the 7-Eleven you have to pay for the minutes in advance? Wait. You know, like drug dealers use? I think I'm going to go outside in the garage or something. <laughs> I see. This is great. I got to tell you, you can't even tell you. Call for a cell phone. So what happened? You tell me what happened. <laughs> well, I can hear you. I know you can hear me, but I can hear like with all the people on the background. Something's wrong. <laughs> so anyhow, so that's what I wanted to apologize for because I feel bad to those guys that happened. I mean, all those stories that I'm hearing and like, you know, like all the girls that don't shave and stuff. Are your legs shaved right now? Oh, no, no, I'm good. I, you know, you know like I'm nice shaved, you know, like, because now I'm not just around. Do you shave downstairs also? You know, like I'm not sleeping around or like trying to sleep with anybody other than my husband. So it doesn't matter. But back in the day... You know, like, we will do it just to try to stay away from sleeping with guys. And is that in Argentina or here? No, here, here. I've been oh. here since 98. Since 98. So back in the day when you needed a green card, you only shaved on nights when you were going to sleep with someone. <laughs> no, I got my green card with my first husband. Oh, with your first husband. Yeah, he was a starter husband. You need. He was the green card husband. No, 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 The green card husband is gone. We're, like, we got divorced. Because you got what you needed. A green card. <laughs> no, 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 We just, you know, we met, uh, well, actually, I was starting, like, ESL, like, um, English classes, right? Yes. And he was finishing high school. And then, so we started dating, and then after, like, two, almost three years, we got married. Yeah. Two or three years? <laughs> Two or three years? <laughs> I can yes. hear you laughing, but I can't, like, hear your thought. Like, I don't know if you're saying something. Uh, well, I was saying a lot of things. All right, dear. This has been a lot of fun. Outrageous. Who's that? Tell me about your life. I don't know. <laughs> Who's that? Really? That? <laughs> Do not dance, single mama. The what? Thank you for calling. Oh, thank you guys. I'm gonna hang up because this is. Thank you for calling. It's my communication is just stuck. You don't really care. <laughs> Oh, you know what? My husband wants you to blow me up. Okay. Here I go. I gotta get me one of those VoIP phones. The quality is remarkable. Unbelievable. Oh, boy. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> Let me get one more in here, and then we're going to get to uh, our guest coming up here, Radonna. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Donna. Hello. Hello. I Hi. <laughs> I have a question here for you. Yes. Now, my boyfriend and I, we met over the Internet, and um, we've been together a little over a year. But the other day, I noticed that he was still surfing the Internet, um, the singles, uh, Sides. Is his name and Bernie Ward? What's that? Is his name Bernie Ward? Same part of Ward? No, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Too. Yeah, he, no, different different dating sites. And um, I asked Is his him, name Bernie Ward? <laughs> is the part of Ward? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You're killing me, Larry. 
And uh, I don't know, I just asked him why is he still going to these sites, and he told me that um, he's just curious to see that who is looking at his portrait. So I and I said, you know, why should it uh, interest you? Then I just want to give have your take on that, you know. Well, if he's still on there, there's probably a good reason for it. Because you know what? Those things aren't free. They're free? No, they're not free. No, they're not free. So why is he paying for that? Well, um, actually, he tells me um, it, you pay to communicate, but to just look at, ooh, view your portrait. It's, not, it's free. Are you sure he's not still paying for it? I'm not sure. He told me he's not. I know he told you that, but... Okay. So, um, do you think he's just looking for something better out there? Because he told me he's happy with what he has right now, you know? But um, he's still looking. And uh, Well, you, are you bother. still looking? Huh? Are you still looking? No, but I'm thinking that I'm going to go back and um, put my... Um, Why don't you put your portrait back up? On my profile back up. Yes. You think that's a good idea? Sure, put it up. <laughs> okay. I, all right. Um, just want to have your take on it. Yes. And put some new pictures up there, too. But that's what I'm going to do. Put new pictures up. Lots of cleavage. Lots of cleavage. Yes. <laughs> okay, Tom. Um, that's what you do. Just tell them you're yeah. curious about who would respond. You're not, not interested. You're just curious. I'm just curious. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's what I say. Then when, the, then when he catches you emailing the people, say, well, I was just curious, like, if I wrote to them, what they would say. <laughs> then if he catches you meeting one of the guys, say, I was just curious about whether I'd want to have sex with him. <laughs> just curious. That's a little crazy because, you know. After uh, you've had sex with the guy, just say, I was just curious about how it would be. <laughs> you know, I'm just curious, but... um. Yeah. It's like Bernie okay. Ward. He was just curious. <laughs> just curious. Yeah, Bernie was just curious. <laughs> he was okay. researching a book. Research. He was oh, online researching you, a book, yes. I will do that. That's what I'm, I, I have already started taking some pictures and thinking that I will put them up on all the singles um, site that yeah, I... Yeah, put it up on all the sites. Uh, put a, you know, go to, you know, match.com and... Yahoo yeah. Personals and, and go to J Date, that Jewish site. Put it everywhere. I will. <laughs> Tom, Thanks, Tom. Just tell them you're curious how many hundreds of people would respond if you put it on every site. That, <laughs> you know what I did? I, I actually um, put up a picture of someone else, and he's already looked at that picture. But it's, so you know, here's what it's, you do you, you, you respond, to his, uh, respond to his profile. I did. Did you, did he respond to you? Yes, but and he said to me. Well, I he, thought. Wait, I thought if he's, <laughs> he can't respond unless he's paying. Well, um, that's what he is paying, but I don't know. All right. So what you're gonna do? You're gonna make up. You're gonna make up a fake email address. Yeah. And you're gonna write to him, and you're gonna describe yourself as being even hotter than you are. Yeah. And you're gonna tell him that you want to meet him late at night. Uh huh. And uh, you're gonna you're gonna ask him if he's married or has a girlfriend, which of course he'll say no. Yeah. And then when you meet him out there on the street, you're going to tell him that's it. We're done. Okay. <laughs> All right. And the reason you're done is because you're just curious about how many other men you can get your hands on. <laughs> I, I, I know I probably won't have no problem there because, I mean... There's so many other people looking, you know, and oh, yeah. they're all curious. They're, they're, everybody's curious. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. A fat girl's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Like It Show. Tom like his show. I'm 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And returning to the show for their, I think it's Phil's second visit, Antonio's third visit, I believe. Yep. Because I think, Antonio, you you did it by yourself once. Did I? I don't even He's, remember that. Yeah, He's you big did. Time. 
You did it once by yourself. You were not available. You were on a movie set with Tom Cruise or something, right? <laughs> Antonio and Spondiari and uh, Phil Locke, the Unabomber, are here, and uh, these are two of the most famous poker players of the entire world. I think you're starting to sound like Antonio with the BS there, Tom. <laughs> wow. Well, of course, being the most famous poker player in the world, we can talk about the, you know, it's like having the number one show on the Golf Channel, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> but no, poker is a lot hotter than Why the Golf you Channel. Why does he like this? <laughs> we we you, nice to see you too, Tom. No, no, no. I mean, poker is hot as a pistol, of course. And you could make, in fact, seriously speaking, I said this earlier. Uh, I'm amazed there is not a poker channel because poker's on 24 hours a day on some channel somewhere. You go down to the Commerce Casino and you see how sickly explosive poker's become. I mean, I was there two nights ago and there was a one-two game with 500 on the button. There was a 500, 100, 200 game. Yeah, and there was a 500,000 PLO this is game. It's like a $50,000 buying game. Yeah. There was one game that was a $100,000 buying game yeah. minimum. Yeah, there's so much there's, action at the Commerce Center. I mean, it's ridiculous. Every table was used up. Every table they have something like 270 tables, and every table was s sutured up. Well, another indication of how hot it is is that uh, poker shows now not only run the first time around, now they're rerunning old poker shows. Uh, for example, all the poker after dark shows from NBC, they all rerun on the Universal Channel on cable. I mean, these shows now not only run first run, they run and rerun and Thank rerun God again. Thank God for that, because one of my favorite moments in poker time is when Antonio and I were down at the heads up on poker after dark. Yes, you won that. Uh, yes, so it hurt. <laughs> no, I don't appreciate hearing about it. Yeah, shoot. And if you really want more sick action on the 23rd, you can go down to the Commerce Casino, plunk down 10K, and you'll be in there with 700, 800 runners, and you have a shot at winning uh, millions. You have a shot million. at winning millions. What are the odds? Two, three million. Well, if, you, if you're just listening to the show and you're going to drive down for your first time, <laughs> you're probably drawn dead. But you're welcome. Come on down with your $10,000. You can play against the pros, win millions of dollars. That's Realistically, right. if there's 700 players, you're one in 700 of winning. But, you know, you're taking the skill factor. Phil's probably one in 30. <laughs> so it just depends on your skill level. One and, of course... Five. Everybody thinks they're a great poker player. Everybody I talk to thinks they are great. And they watch TV and they see you guys on TV. They're, come on. It's, uh, I could do that. Everybody that's, says that. That's the beautiful thing about poker and what keeps the pigeons, the fishies, coming back is because there's no way to prove who is the better poker player. And so they just keep thinking that someone keeps getting lucky on them. So yeah. they never give up. They just keep writing checks. They, it's a beautiful thing. It's like... Uh it's a real, I almost wrote a poem once where there was this guy. It was a 2040 game, and he kept losing money. And 2040, no limit holds. 2040, the yeah. blinds. And you know, it's a $2,000 buying game, and every time he lost his next 2000 he would peel out another 2000 from somewhere. And by the last one, it was his precious. It was wrapped in the Wells Fargo like little envelope, and it was warped against the to that the same curvature it had against to his body because it had been there for 24 hours and he pulled it out and I was like and then my buddy and I made a bet how long would it last and I took the under on 30 minutes and I won 100 bucks yeah it was gone now you guys so. bet on more than just poker I mean you have a TV show based on this but you guys don't don't limit it to the poker table do you? no, no. we bet on everything um, every dinner bill we have every booze bill we have every time we have a dispute about anything it's like right. instead of put just, up or shut just up just you know? put up or shut up yeah yeah. And on his TV show, it's called, rah, rah, I bet rah, you. Rah. Some guys approached, they, somebody somewhere out there made a show, and they're like, hey, we got to get two people to run this show now. It was called I Bet You. And then somehow they came to us, and it was perfect because we've right. been at Basically, it. Basically, we just walk around and make bets on anything and everything, whether or not we can get a girl's phone number, who's a better skydiver, who's, who had, who's who has, better sperm. Right, who has, <laughs> you know, we, we actually, actually went, went into a medical yeah. clinic having no idea what we were doing. We're like, and got our sperm tested. Yeah, there's, the camera going in. Yeah, you know, everything. Motility, survivability, liquefaction, all these crazy <laughs> like And uh, it's, it's all shot in HD, so it's pretty clear, and it's on the Mojo Network. So if you have yep. a high-def cable, check out the Mojo Network. Phil show, I bet you. See, now what I do is I, I offer people money to do a humiliating thing. <laughs> we do that too. We, do we, that too. we, we pay the guy $600. A kid, he's like 20 years old to run <laughs> naked in Central Park around these two trees that were, you know, 200 feet away from each other. First, we gave him a free roll for 50 bucks, which we kept increasing if he could eat this pretzel and right without water. He couldn't, yeah, he he couldn't, couldn't do that. Then we thought he was like such, he had such he was spirit, so hungry we like, to earn, so we had to do something. Yeah. Like See, Dean, our screener, uh, you know, we go to the hockey games here in LA all the time, and Cuba Gooding Jr is a hockey fan. He plays hockey. In fact, he plays adult hockey, and he goes to the Kings games all the time. And I have offered Dino uh, increasing amounts of money. Uh, I've gone to a 1,000 and more. Uh, if he would uh, go up to Cuba Gooding Jr. and say, show me the money, because no one's ever done that before. Right. right. <laughs> and then on top of that, I offered to double it if you would actually show him some money. For a 1,000, I would do it. 
I, I would do it for th 30 bucks. Th 35 yeah. cents. Now, my brother, no. I, did, I did to my own brother. It was, um, yep. I was in New York the day the, uh, they had the parade for the New York Giants winning the Super Bowl. And there were many people who went to the parade like at 12 noon and were drinking all day and then came to the Rangers hockey game that night at Madison Square Garden. They were drunk and they're all wearing Eli Manning jerseys going, hey, Giants! Ah! I offered my brother 500 bucks to tell one of these guys the Giants suck. <laughs> <laughs> And Tony and I just recently made a bet with a buddy of ours for 50, that was our, one of our biggest non-smoking bets ever. 50k, if he couldn't smoke for a year, and other, 50k, normally anyone would win this bet, but the guy's worth like crazy money, so 50k is not a huge number. Right, one guy. year, no cigarettes. And we actually gave him a like, he was doing good not smoking. Four so months, like, no cigarettes. We said, like, look, you, you can, can smoke, smoke until... Two weeks, free. You know? yeah. So he started <laughs> but we have to, what we cut him down on the, uh, the minute before right. St. Patty's Day starts, he has to, his little, uh, his, uh, what is it called? His free pass ends. So we're hoping right. that on St. Patty's Day, he gets the shivvies and has to right. have a cigarette. <laughs> right, wow. exactly. Yep. 50,000. It's good that he's got nicotine back in his system again. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for us. Our equity goes up, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We're going to come back uh, with our guests, Antonio Espandieri and Phil Locke, the Unabomber. They're going to be competing in the L.A. Poker Classic at Commerce Casino, which begins on February the 23rd. And even you can play against them if you think you're better than them. And you've seen them on television. Maybe you'd like to give that a shot. I'd love to see how many suckers are going to try this. And we know you did this last year. How many last year showed up? I think it was like seven, about seven, eight hundred, yeah. Yeah. And they laid down. First place was two and a half million. That they means laid down ten k a piece, right? Yep, seven 10, million 000. in prize money distributed to the top ten percent of the finishers. All and that it was a local from L.A. Yeah. Eric Heather won. Yeah. At the end, the whole show gets uh, cut up and made into a TV show, which you can watch on GSN. They they air it about a month or two later. So if you miss it, uh, if you know, you can actually go down to the commerce and watch it. You on on the the final day of play is. Uh, it's five days after the main event. It's five days five after. Or six days. Well, I'm looking at the sheet. I can't yeah. find it. March 3rd. Uh, March 3rd. I figured I would say There it is. March 3rd is the last day at 2 p.m. You can actually go down there and try and get a seat to watch it. It's kind of exciting. So. Well, we'll take a break. We'll take some phone calls coming up at 1-800-5800-TOM. Your telephone calls coming up next. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are coming to you from Hollywood, California. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Antonio Espandieri and Bill Locke are here. They're competing in the L.A. Poker Classic at the Commerce Casino beginning February 23rd. And even if you can't be there, you've seen these guys on TV, every poker show, every channel, they're they're all over the place. In fact, I, I imagine there are people who've seen these guys with the sound turned down. Ever go to a bar at 11 o'clock at night and they've got the poker show on, the sound turned down? By the Very way, this guys. tournament was the one uh, that made Antonio so big time. He won $1.4 a couple of years ago, right here. I now passed them on the, uh, you know, recognition, the cube, the poker, cube, whatever God it's factor, and then the, two days later... <laughs> He has to win the Invitational and catch right. up. It was so nice to just leave my friend in the dust, you know? <clears throat> yeah, every year after the after the 10K event, they have a tournament where they invite tons of celebrities all over L.A. and pros, et cetera, and they have a free roll for 100, 200,000 200, free roll, something yeah. like that. It's so the only tournament come. Phil ever won, I think. Yeah. It's a celebrity <laughs> Invitational. For $87. Kitching. Somehow he hypnotized me. <clears throat> so, hey, let's do some call-ins or emails or let's whatever. Let's do We got calls yeah. right here. Let's say hi to emails. Rob. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Father? Not much, son. Father. How are you guys doing? Great. Good, good. I go to the commerce a lot, to tell you the truth, Tom, and uh, I go around uh, 12 to 1 when the bullpen is empty for that night, and there's a lot of guys just drunk making stupid bets, so it's always a good way to come up. I have a great time there, to tell you the truth, and uh, I'm hopefully going to... Join the guys in this tournament this time and try to become a millionaire or something. Well, good luck. By the way, for those of you out there that can't afford the 10K to get in, they have $1,000 super satellites, meaning uh, you plunk down 1050 bucks or something, and you're in there with, let's say, 100 people, and 10 people will get tickets to, uh, or like, you know, one in every 10 people gets a ticket to the big tournament. So it's not 
tenth gate is not a you know barrier to entry or anything. You can there's like two hundred dollars satellites. There's hundred dollars satellites. There's all sorts of ways to win your your way into the main right. tournament. You got to get over there. It's on. T you go south or north on the five, and it's Washington. They have Google. Yeah, so. yeah, Washington okay. exit. Right. Yeah, so Washington exit, and actually re uh, renovated it recently with the uh, flat screens and everything, so it looks pretty good. Looks decent. Yep. Yep. What's your question, brother? Like, I'm thinking Tom's Tom job here. Tom's, like, sitting here <laughs> chilling, like, okay, Go Philly, for it. Right. Do it. Yeah. Um, that was about it. I just want to wish you guys luck for that event, cool. and I'll uh, see you guys there, hopefully. Well, good luck. Thanks. I need luck. Antonio yeah. doesn't. He's too good. Uh, I think Antonio needs a little bit of luck against me. All right, bro. We'll see you around. Cheers, bro. All right. Hey, right. Tom. Yeah. Take me out, Kobe. Kobe style. Okay, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1-800-5-800-TALK. We like that. I want to get my own radio show so I can do things like that, you know? <laughs> That's why everybody wants a radio show now. Everybody. Phil, when's your radio show coming up? I don't know. A guy like you should have one. <laughs> Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, what's going on, brother? Not much, Jason. I had a question for Antonio and Phil. Actually, two questions. Uh, first one is, how did they get their bankroll started? Like, you know, were they playing like one, two limit or, you know? And the second one was, uh, who's their least favorite player to play with? Most annoying. Okay. The bankroll thing is simple. You put in long hours at small stakes and you build up you get rich slow there's a the get rich fast stuff uh that's for the movies and in real life you grind and work. you build you yep. grind and you build and then when you get fat with cash you can play the bigger games and you play less hours and make more money and it's all just like you think it is it's great okay but the first <laughs> couple of years is tedious and painful i was playing two four limit hold them then three six limit hold them then six twelve then fifteen thirty and then no limit hold them and then here we are here yeah, by the time today. you're playing 200, 400, no limit with $50,000 buy-ins, you, you don't have to work every day. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, it's a different, different scene. And as far, as far as, uh, number two, that person <clears throat> does exist, but I certainly wouldn't say it over the air. Oh, come on. <laughs> I actually, you know what? The, the crazier they are, the, some of the guys that get a bad rap, I love being e either at their table or near their table. The guys that cause rock. It is entertainment. Because it's like, uh, if you can't turn, the chaos in a casino into your own personal orchestra and symphony of joy. Then you have no <laughs> shot at you have no shot at winning being a winning player. You have to like somehow harness Enjoy that insanity and just turn it into like, wow, this is beautiful. You have to see it as a beautiful thing. Has T V has T V changed poker the way guys play? It's changed uh, the yeah. For sure. it, I'll tell you this, it has changed. Uh, I used to be able to bluff a lot more. Now I have to be more careful because people are all wanting to pick me off and catch me in bluffs, that sort of thing. So, Well, they see you know people playing at the final table of the World Poker Tour, and they come down to the cash game and think that's how you're supposed to play in a cash game, and they just go berserko with every hand. Right, in some which sense. Which is beautiful. The, right. The fish know? that come in and they have learned some things from TV, it's made them m more hopeless than if they just had come in and not known anything. So in that case... uh but, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's changed it up a little bit. Well, the other thing I would imagine is that people can always watch you guys playing and can start to try to figure out, uh, you know, well, whether, <clears> when Tom, you're bluffing. The, or what the most interesting thing about a real solid uh, poker player is a great poker player can say, here is how I'm playing. This is my playbook. And the best you can do against that player is uh, operate on an equilibrium-based uh, strategy and break even against him. In fact, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to set up a situation where your opponents can't put you on hands, don't know where you're at, know that you're bluffing X percent of the time with the you know with with X range of hands, and you're betting the nuts weak and solid. Like all all the techniques that come out of a uh, out of a guy's playbook are impossible to beat. The closer he approximates good poker. So yeah, give that to us again one more time. <laughs> Bottom line is the better you play, the more you can tell everyone how you're playing, and it doesn't matter to you. You'll see these guys competing in the L.A. Poker Classic at, Com at Commerce Casino beginning February 23rd. Antonio Esfandiari, Phil, the Unabomber Lock. Thank you both for coming. Good to see you Thank again. Thank you, Dr. Likas. The Tom Likas Show.